Well, hello there and welcome back. All right, so what we're going to be doing is, well, basically starting the first tutorial. And in here, this is where we're going to be working with. And we're going to be basically setting up a hello world type of text, in a sense. And it's just going to be regular old text. We're going to be using this PDF specs. Uh, we're viewing it in my uh, browser right at the moment. And so I've already got that loaded up. Next thing up here is, let's see here. Now, you will find the PDF here, but again, you can get it from the original website. Make sure, you, but I already have included it in the actual uh, download for the from the GitHub. So you, you have access to that. Uh, what else here? All right. So one thing we're going to be doing is we're going to go over step by step on how this works here. Now I use Notepad++ for this. You can use whatever uh, text editor you want to use, but this is what we have. All right, so to start out with, these two right here, these two are not in the PDF. Now, when I have all of the page numbers to all of the structs, but I also added the page number here, for uh, to demonstrate what you're going to be needing for this kind of thing here. Now, notice here's the page number, uh, 449. So let's say, for example, you really want to look that up. You can just highlight that and basically copy. And you can go to the PDF. And you're supposed to be able to do a search here. Now, I usually use another uh, option. Let's see, does this even have that option? Last page, no, there is no search. So I'm going to say Control F and see if I can find that. Oh, yeah, so it does work. All right. So you just keep hitting red, uh, editing editor, and you can actually see that it actually shows you here um, where it actually begins. Now, the one we're looking for, that says uh, 439. Keep in mind, the PDF pages might be slightly different, but this is what... I have set up here. So let's go see what 449 looks like. Well, there it is, right there, 449. So it is right spot on. OK, so just to kind of verifying to you that it is showing what it's supposed to be. So we'll just, you can just keep searching until you actually get to what you're trying to look for here. Um, let's see what else we got. One more time. And 446, like that, and 448, so here's 449 uh, right here. All right, and you can see that this is the actual struct right there. Now, you could just copy and paste this if you want to write this from scratch, but there will be some differences when you go to do this, all right? For the most part, you can just copy and paste it right out of the PDF. But again, there will be some differences. Now, if you'll notice, I only have, for this beginning tutorial, I only have this much of it. You'll notice the output string and the reset. So you notice I'm not using the rest of this. Now, you can go ahead and copy this and go ahead and update your code with that. Uh, but it's not necessary for this first tutorial. Now, now that I've shown that, so we're going to go back here and step by step show what this is uh, doing. Now, this notation is extremely important for this right here. For the C language, since we are using C and not C++ or any other language, we need to be able to set this up in a way so that if you are on certain architecture that will require 32-bit instead of 16-bit, then this needs to be able to adapt to that. And that is why this is designed in such a way that it is. According to the PDF specs, it requires that char 16 be a wide character. Wide being 16-bit on most computer operating systems, but it, in some, I guess, would be 32. So it has to have what's called the unsigned int least amount, which is 16, 16 bits. 
So that way it can expand to 32 bits on those machines if it needs to. And that is why uh, I made two of these for reference. See, I included the both type defs as a means of reference. That's why I did both. You absolutely do not need that if you're going to use this here because that is actually what the actual PDF specs says to use for this. So I just did this as a reference here because some out there actually recognize this in uh, C++. Uh, but again, this is a C series. So, All right, you also need to make sure you have all of these. Now, 32-bit, 64-bit, these are the type desk for that. True or false, that's where the Boolean comes in. We also need to have a handle, an EFI handle, and an EFI status. Now, the EFI handle is basically nothing, oops, sorry, this is basically nothing but a pointer. That's all a handle is. And let's see what else we have here. So this we have to have here as a filler. And the reason for that, for the simple text, is so that if there's any kind of references, um, it just kind of fills it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here in the bottom. And this is basically the entrance. Think of it as, uh, for those C programmers or C++ programmers, think of it as your main entrance. And you'll see main, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can look up more about how this all works here. I've put the notation here. And basically, we have the image handle, and we've got the system table. The system table is this struct, and it's the first thing that is filled in when you go to set up your EFI. All right? So when you first boot up the computer, all of your information gets transferred here to that struct. All right? This is very important to know. You cannot run anything without this table filled in. So this is why this is the first thing that gets done. You'll end up with your table header, which is this. All right. So this will get filled in from here if you call that. But we had to have that for this to actually work. The next thing we're going to do is you have to have console out, which is what this is all about. It has a handle, and then it calls that protocol. That protocol is this. And if you remember what I shared earlier, that protocol is all of this here, but we're only using the top two. So that's why I have it set up as short like this, to keep this as simple as possible. The struct is for the EFI text output in the console. So what we do is we're basically clearing the console out. We're, re we're resetting it. And then we print whatever string we want. So how does that work? Well, let's uh, double click that and scroll down. We're using it to print that string here. All right, so how this works is you take the table, all right, which in this case is con out, which is going here. And the con out is going, well, okay, we need uh, that protocol. Notice the output string from con out, well, let's go check and see what the out text protocol is. And you'll notice there it is. There's our string. And it's, it's in layers. Think of it as in layers, your slices of onions. And so that's how it goes from one struct calling another struct, and it goes on from there. And this struct is going, okay, well, we need this to print our string, and that is how this comes in. And this is how simple it is to utilize what we have when you go to actually read what this is all about. So let's take a look at this right here. Scrolling down, simple text output, all right, scrolling down, there's the reset, and there's our output string, and there it is right there. If I simple, and I do not include this right here. That is a Visual Studio thing. I'm sorry, but there's no necessarily reason to add those in. Um, but anyhow, the point is, is you'll you'll look at the code and you can see how this actually is put together. And so you can see how this works uh, in this way. So with this, 
you have what's called the this command and it's saying, hey, look, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at this struct and we're utilizing that right here. Now, these functions are all built in to the EFI. And how this works is that first, when you first turn on your computer, you're actually calling, uh, you're actually filling in or utilizing the BIOS. The BIOS is not being replaced by EFI. E EFI is actually part of the BIOS, including the legacy BIOS from the old days when you had 16-bit booting. We're gonna get into that later. Uh, but for now, we have uh, the reset. We're basically just saying a Boolean here. Do we want to reset it? Yes. Well, that's where this one comes in. We're saying yes, number one. If it was a false, it would be a zero. So we're resetting the screen. We're outputting the text, and we go into a while loop. All right? And then, of course, a zero, or in this case, EFI success, is all, also represents a zero. I just didn't add the define in that. So that's basically everything you need in a nutshell for this to work. Here's what we need to compile it. All right. And we are using the Microsoft uh, interface for the a uh, ABI. So that's why we're using here. If you're on Linux, it will be different, but you can look that up. Um, this is also representing that we are using subsystem 10 of the EFI application. The others, there's 11 and 12, and those represent drivers, which we're not creating. We're creating an application, which is this right here. All right, so um, this is our C file, which is this. And again, when you look here, you'll notice that we're calling the EFI main. So that is why we are setting that up here. Okay, that's what that represents. Um, okay, so we just create, we take the object file that we create here, and we just recompile uh, that back to here. Delete whatever object file, we pause. Now, the make file I did also include. So here you go for those who prefer to use a make file. It's basically the same thing as the bat file. The reason I use bat files is because I can double click. I don't have to type anything out. All right, so now that that's done, all right, so I'm just going to double click the bad file. It's going to compile that right there. By the way, you don't get this message every single time. So let's say, for example, uh, the, the first time you run that, you're going to get that message. But then you won't get that message again. You just have to accept it the first time. And you'll notice that we've created uh, this right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy this to here. Mount, select, drive, open. Uh, next, mount entire image. Next, ah, direct, HDD. It's a physical drive. And paste it right in there. Okay, so there we go. There, dismount, say okay. And let's use VirtualBox because VirtualBox is um, pretty useful for this. You just go ahead and click play because we've already got everything initialized. We don't need this now. And there we go, right there. And it should hang, and there it is, testing. And you can't do anything because, you know, we're just starting out. So all it does is it prints the, word, the text, and it hangs. And that's it, guys. See you on the next video. Thanks for watching.